rise up. Come on. And it took, you know, it was a lot of years, a lot of years for me to begin to get this understanding. I think sometimes we pray wrong. We're praying for stuff we've already gotten, just not making use of. So it, it kind of goes like this. Dave and I are having a conversation that's getting loud. How many of you know what it means when the conversation starts getting loud? Okay. So now see, that's like a warning sign. Here you go, been there, done that. And so something's coming at me from this way, but something is rising up in me. And you know, sometimes for me, it's just this little like, shh. It didn't take a four part series. I knew God was saying, shut up. I don't want to shut up <laughs> and you are I am not about to let you think that you're right when I know you're wrong so here we go <laughs> but see here's the thing even though this might be irritating me if I let this peace that's in me rise up then I can remain pretty cool in this situation. So when I decided that I just wasn't gonna live without peace, the first thing I did, and this will be your first assignment, I started paying attention to what my peace stealers were, and I started making changes. If I said to you right now, I could bring almost any one of you up here and say, what is it that steals your peace? And boy, you could rattle off a list. So you need to make a list. You need to make a list of what are the things that steal your peace, and you need to realize that the devil knows what every one of them are. And one of my favorite sayings, he sets you up to get you upset. Because no peace means no power. You with me? No peace means no power. Now I'm gonna tell you a little story. I told it in one of my conference last weekend, but it's fresh and it makes sense, so I'm going to tell it again. I did a little teaching, one of these little studio teachings that I do on television sometime with a smaller audience a couple weeks ago on uh, sowing and reaping. But not just about, I wasn't even particularly talking about financial sowing and reaping. I was just talking about sowing and reaping in every area of our life. And I get really excited about that sowing and reaping thing because I feel like it, it gives me a measure of control over my life. In other words, if I want more friends, all I got to do is be more friendly. If I want people to be nicer to me, all I need to do is start being nicer to them. So it's really like a cool thing that God's given us. Well, we always want to wait to get what we, we want. Why don't you give me what I want? But God says you got to sow some first, then you'll reap some. So I really like that. Give mercy, you'll reap mercy. So judgment, you'll get judgment. So it works in every area of life. You help people, God will provide people to help you when you need help. So after I did the teaching, Ginger and I were talking, and I just kind of made my mind up that I was just going to put this to the test. I'm just going to pick something, and I'm going to start sowing it on purpose, and I'm going to see how long it takes for me to start getting it back. And... Um, she said, I'm going to do the same thing. So she told me what she was going to do. It was good. She's something she wanted, so she was going to start sewing it. And I didn't really know what I wanted, so I said, I'm going to have to pray. So I, I started praying about, well, God, what do I really want? So, and here again, I don't, don't mean this to sound like I'm trying to be real religious, but more than anything that I want at this point in my life, what I want is... God's power on me in such a way when I preach the gospel that 